Oxidation states may be something new and unfamiliar, but once you get your head around the rules, they are really, really lovely, really, really easy to apply, but to be able to apply them, you have to practice. So here are the rules with an explanation of how they all work. Oxidation states can tell us how many electrons an element within a compound individually has lost or gained. One of the rules is that the majority of the time oxygen has an oxidation state of minus 2. Which makes sense considering to fill its outer shell, oxygen needs to gain 2 electrons to gain 2 negative charges and thus an oxidation state of minus 2. Hydrogen nearly always has an oxidation state of plus one, which makes sense since when bonding in a compound, it is going to be giving up this electron to something else. It is going to be losing electron, losing a negative charge, so it's going to end up with a positive charge. These are the rules for oxidation states. You are going to need to learn these confidently and you are going to need to be able to apply these. This is the first in a long series of videos where I'm going to take you through applying them in a range of different situations. But to start with, here are just the rules. All uncombined elements have an oxidation state of zero. So if something is on its own, it hasn't lost or gained any electrons, it's not forming a bond with something, it's not in a compound, it's gonna have all the electrons it has started with, it's oxidation state of zero. Molecules with only one element in also have an oxidation state of zero. While they may have lost or gained electrons, on average, no one um, element within that compound can say to have gained or lost more electrons than the other, so it is zero. The oxidation state of an iron is the same as its charge. In a compound, the sum of the oxidation states is equal to the overall oxidation state. Oxygen is nearly always an oxidation state of minus 2, except when combined with fluoride or in a peroxide. Hydrogen is nearly always plus 1, except when it is in a hydride, when it is minus 1. Fluorine is nearly always minus 1, and chlorine is nearly always minus 1, except when combined with fluorine or oxygen. The best way to do this is for me to show you lots of examples. Here are three equations and I would expect a good student to be able to balance these equations. So let's start with a nice easy one. Bromine over here. It is only one element in there so it is going to have an oxidation state of zero. Another easy one over here. Oxygen is always going to be minus 2. There is only one oxygen in there. Hydrogen is always going to be plus 1 and there are two of them. So overall that makes plus 2, plus 2, minus 2. Overall that makes 0 and this compound over here has an overall charge of 0. Sticking over this side, here we have oxygen that is going to be minus 2. There are two of them in this compound, so overall oxygen is going to have contributed minus 4. Since sulphur dioxide has an overall charge of 0, that means the sulphur must have an oxidation state of plus 4. This oxygen over here is also going to have an oxidation state of minus 2, and there are four of them in this compound, which means overall it is contributing minus 8. Potassium. Now, if you're not sure or you can't remember, the, the charge on the most common iron is a good place to start. So potassium plus one oxidation state, hydrogen plus one oxidation state. This has an overall charge of zero. So we have two positives and eight negatives. So we need some more positives to make that up, meaning sulfur is going to be plus six in the sulfate iron. Over here, oxygen is minus 2, and we have 4 of them, giving us minus 8 in total. Hydrogen is plus 1, and we have 2 of them, giving us plus 2 in total, leaving sulphur to contribute plus 6. Potassium over here, the most common iron is going to be minus 1, and the bromine, plus 1, sorry, the most common iron is going to be minus one. Next one here, sodium, the most common iron is going to be plus one and iodine that is going to be minus one. Hydrogen plus one and there are two of them in this compound so that gives us an overall contribution of plus two. 
oxygen is minus 2. There are four of them in this compound, giving us an overall contribution of minus 8, leaving sulphur to contribute plus 6. Uh, oxygen over here, minus 2 times 4, giving us an overall contribution of minus 8. Sodium plus 1, there are two of them, giving us an overall contribution of plus 2 leaving sulphur at plus six. Iodine is on its own, so it's going to, or not on its own, but with another iodine, so that's going to be zero. Hydrogen is plus one, and there are two of them, giving an overall contribution of plus two, leaving the sulphur over here to contribute minus two. Hydrogen is plus one, and there are two of them, giving an overall contribution of plus two, leaving oxygen to give its minus two. And the last one for you here. Uh, potassium, the most common iron, is going to be plus one, so that's what we can assume the oxidation state is here. Chlorine, the most common oxidation state, is minus one. Oxygen is minus two, and there are two of them, giving an overall contribution of minus four, leaving manganese to be plus four. Oxygen, again, minus two times four, gives us a total of minus eight. Hydrogen is plus one, there are two of them, giving us an overall contribution of plus two, leaving sulfur to be plus six. Oxygen is minus two, there are four of them, giving us an overall contribution of minus eight. Potassium, plus one, because it's his most common iron. There are two of them, giving us an overall contribution of plus two, leaving sulfur again to be plus six. Oxygen over here, um, that is minus two times four, giving us an overall contribution of minus eight. In the sulphate iron, if you're not sure, we can always assume that sulphate, sulphur is plus six, giving us manganese at plus two. Chlorine is an element by itself, so that is going to be zero. Oxygen is minus two, hydrogen is plus one, and there are two of them, giving us plus two overall. These are um, complicated, these can seem quite intimidating, but really, once you practice lots and lots and get the hang of them, they're fine.